Alright, finally. I know it's been forever, but here comes part three in my last video for the Hellraiser Quartet of Torment. Um, let's go. Welcome to Gotham. Xenobites. Alright, so welcome everybody. Welcome YouTube. I'm back to another video. You've clicked on Gotham Cenobites. I'm Terry. And today we're going to wrap up the Hellraiser Quartet of Torment. <laughs> this is part three. Um, if you like this video, um, go check out part one, um, which deals with... Um, have a long story and my views and thoughts on Hellraiser 1 in this set. And then part 2 is my thoughts on Hellraisers 2 and 3. And um, today we are going to be all about Bloodline, the fourth movie in this box set. My favorite movie and uh, I'm kind of glad I saved it for its own um, because it was the best experience I had um, as a whole um, throughout all four of these movies um, and then I'll finally probably wrap it up um, with my rating overall of the whole box set which I don't even remember what I rated the other three movies probably should have watched that first anyways so Hellraiser Quartet of Torment um, Hellraiser Bloodline I'm going to start um, by mentioning um, the picture on the thumbnail. I was just searching um, for the cover of this movie um, to kind of use, you know, as I usually I pop it up. I mean, I probably want this one because I have it physically in hand today. But, um, searching high and low, by the way, I know I said it in the other two parts, but this was released by Arrow Video. We still put their logo up but um so i was searching um, I, I had it i lost it so i was searching for the movie cover again and i came across that picture and it had the pinhead which was released the chatterer which is the uh, exclusive that i got but then there was a cd picture and an angelique picture and i'm like well that's from the third movie and that's from the fourth movie <sighs> I really wish they would have given us all four options. I know personally there is some collectors out there that would have bought all four. I am not that crazy. I will say Hellraiser Bloodline is probably my favorite movie out of the entire series, but Hellraiser 3 has my favorite Cenobites. And, um, so I totally would have bought the CD cover had they done it. So I just wanted to address the picture I found, and that's why I used it for the thumbnail for this last part. Is Arrow Video, Arrow Films, I really wish you'd have made all four. But, um, so moving on past that, um, we're going to start talking about Bloodline, um, the regular, yeah, I have all my notes here. Um, yeah, I kind of wish I would have done movie reviews like this in general, because I, mean, I took a ton of notes throughout all four of these movies kind of hell all for these whole this whole process but um so the regular movie um it does look um the best it's ever looked crisp stunning um 4k it looks amazing but um it's the same movie but um there is some scenes where the colors really pop um a whole lot more um i will say this is definitely the most brass pins i've seen or noticed in this version of the film. I mean, I, I know they're, they're all brass, but this is the first time I really noticed it like hardcore in this movie. I mean, yeah. This is also my, you know, Gary Tennant life's like first full blown doing the makeup, and it's to me, of all the Hellraiser movies ever made, this is the best Doug ever looks as Pinhead. So. There's um, a scene where he's in this room with Angelique, and it's where he does the whole I am pain. And we'll probably we'll try to talk about that one, this scene again. But um, in that scene, blue was kind of 
oversaturated, I, I thought. So, I mean, there is kind of good and bad um, to be in looking this good in 4K. I mean, there's definitely some scenes and some parts where it's over oversaturated with color. But overall, I mean, the movie um, it looks great in 4K. Um, yeah, I can't recommend this box set enough. But um, we're going to jump right into um, the special features. And the first one is called The Beauty of Suffering. And this is a look at how goth uh, BDSM um, and fetish influence Clive and the Cenobites. Now, I watched the first five minutes, but once I realized that they were only going to be talking about like, the goth scene, uh, BDSM, and, and all this fetish bullshit, I kind of shut it off because while I know there's a ton of people out there um, who love that type of shit and who love Hellraiser because of that type of shit, that's not why I like it. So, um, I'm not going to say that this is a complete waste of time. It's just not for me. If it's not for me, um, I don't watch or enjoy Hellraiser um, for these aspects. But um, that is just me, and that is just my opinion. So now getting into one of the best things about this whole box set, in my opinion. Um, the second special feature is the work print version. And um, this is... The original director of this film, Kevin Yagers, um, footage um, before his departure. I didn't do a lot of research on that, like I probably should have. I don't know if he quit or if he was removed. Um, but this is an alternate version of the film. Um, it's said, and I'll put on the disclaimer that comes up over my face right now. I took a picture of it. Of uh, what they tell you about this movie, it's an alternate version. It is not the director's cut. I guess that that still used to exist, but is lost. But um, you'll notice right away, and this is probably going to be the longest thing I talk about in this whole video. Because overall, this was a much. I cannot tell you how much better the movie would have been. Um, the footage is not complete. You can definitely tell there's some voice and some some visuals that weren't completely polished yet. But overall, this is just a much much better version of the film. Um, there's so much more um, scenes that were not in the movie. And even most of the scenes you see, there's so much more dialogue that would have made the, I mean, the movie doesn't not... It, it doesn't not make sense to me. But there are certain things that would have made a lot more sense had they put this in here. And you will be surprised at how different the movie is. Kind of like the Justice League versus the Snyder Cut. This is definitely a completely different movie. So in the beginning, you don't even start in space. You just start in a toy maker's shop. They don't really show him putting together the box. They just show the footage they use when um, the dude's telling the story in another version. But, um, so right away you're, you're introduced to the, the Angelique scene where they, where they kill this girl because they play into Resurrected Demon. And right away I noticed it. Um, the wife was kind of with me watching this part of the movie. And you can tell right away that Angelique's voice is different. And it's better? Like, I don't know why... They felt they had to re-record. I don't even know if it's the same actress. It, it sounds like a completely different actress. But this one, um, you can tell it's her voice. And it, it makes it more fluid. It makes It's like these were the lines that, I don't know. All her um, footage that we do see in the movie, it is the same. It's the same dialogue, but there's just more dialogue that was cut. So I don't know why they re-recorded another person's voice over hers. So... It's a little bit creepy, but um, there is some flashback scenes um, of John Merchant, um, the person who, when this movie was recorded, the present day toy maker. Um, there's some flashbacks of him as a kid and his grandma, which is the, the grandma from Wedding Singer with the meatballs. So, um, so that was completely cut out of the movie. Um, we're back to the I Am Pain scene, and there's a scene. Um, when he's first talking to the twins, and you can see the boom mic. Like I said, it's, it's not polished. But, um, you can see the fucking key grip. Um, his fail. Um, and they showed a ton more. 
in that scene. Like I said, there's more dialogue in general. There's a brief exchange between Pinhead and her where he, he knows that she's keeping a secret, which I don't know why that was cut out. But the twins come in, and as he's making them into a Cenobite, they, in the movie they just they show, and as soon as the screw gets to them, they, they don't show anymore. But in this one, they actually show the fucking drill bits going into their face. There's a ton more brutal screaming by the twins, and then they actually show it coming back out. and It's just a way more gruesome scene. And it, I don't know. It's a Hellraiser movie. It's already rated R. Why the fuck did you remove that? <laughs> but, um... Let me see. <sighs> it's not that I didn't not follow this movie, but in the regular version, you kind of... You don't know what Angelique's motives are. You don't know if she knows that the light is going to destroy them, but you do find out with more dialogue in this movie, another scene, that she's trying to get to the light first because she wants to seize control of hell. Because she does not like the new regime. It's torture, suffering, all this shit. So she's trying to get to it first so she can take control. And uh, Pinhead gets wise to it. Um, during that scene where he activates the machine, it actually works. Like, this is just not just a light show, it actually works for a couple minutes. And Pinhead is about to get destroyed, and he does his whole... And, like, a chain comes out of his mouth, and he pulls a bear in from the dune and just floats up to the ceiling to avoid all the shit. And in the regular movie, where you see the chains come out and wrap around Angelique and pull her into the box, that's in this version. Um, they wrap around her and pull her into this light scene. And then, of course, when Pinhead comes down, um, he's safe after the light show fails, and kills the dude in the same way with his head getting chopped off until the dude's wife comes in with the box and saves the day. But, um, it's just this movie makes so much more sense. Angelique's motives, um, not really digging this new hell, but she even says that things seem to have changed. You can tell she's just not digging, uh, Pinhead's, um, trying to make this guy suffer, force him into all this shit. So her motives are a lot more obvious in this one. Um, and then you wake up, and the, the John Merchant, or whoever his name is, in the future, now we're in space. So we don't see space until the very fucking end of this movie. And he has all this long hair, and I looked at the wife, and I think he's about to fucking pull a razor out. And sure enough, he shaves his own head. But um, it's just, it's just a much better movie. And in that scene, there's no sit down and tell the history of the box. Um... He convinces Rimmer to help. They all die the same way. She gets away, and the merchant stays behind like a true captain and goes down with the ship. There is another brief extra dialogue between the future merchant and Angelique. It's probably cut because it, like I said, they kind of got rid of her motives. But um, it's just an all around much better movie. And in my opinion, this being my favorite movie, and seeing this true version, this to me alone is worth you guys going out and buying this. It really is. It, it was surprising. Even though it, it looks like shit, there's a number on the bottom of the screen running the whole time. This story was so much better. I really wish they would have went ahead with this one. But you can tell a lot of the changes they made were probably coming from the studio. And that's probably why he quit or got fired. And they just changed the whole thing. <laughs> but on um, the other two special features, Hellraiser Evolutions, which, oh my god, so awesome piece. I mean, this piece is some of the shit I was wanting in the other three movies, where it's actual interviews with actors, writers, directors, of all from all the Hellraiser movies. I mean, you got. Actors from, from, you know, actors and directors from 5, 6, 7, 8, as well as Doug and Peter Atkins. I mean, this to me, this was the best behind-the-scenes interview piece on this whole box set. Now, I haven't seen Hellraiser Leviathan. That was on the previous release, not this one. I'm sure that's great, and I'm sure I will love it. This to me... They're not even talking about Bloodline. They're talking about Hellraiser in general. They're talking about all the movies. So to me, 
This is the best special feature on the whole box set, in my opinion. The final special feature um, is the Books of Blood and Beyond. And, uh, I don't remember the dude's name, but um, this is somebody who is actual a horror author, and he goes through Clive Barker's entire, um, uh, what, uh, what you call it, his entire anthology. He talks about all the Books of Blood, he talks about all the books that Clive has read from, you know, up until now. And it's actually got me wanting to sit down and watch more movies like like uh, Lord of Illusions, um, Midnight Meat Train, which I wanted to watch that one in general. But um, So it's got me wanting to watch more of Clive's movies. So I'm going to recommend them um, to the crew I review horror movies with over at Casual Nerd Problems. Um, yeah, we're doing Jeepers Creepers next week. But I'm definitely going to start pushing towards more whenever it's my turn of Clive's work. But, um, so that is going to do it. <laughs> I think overall, Bloodline gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I really enjoyed both versions of this movie. Go out and see it. The work print version is so good. It is so good. So, uh, my final verdict on the Quartet of Torment, um, I probably would say 9.5 out of 10. But I'm a huge Hellraiser fan. I love this thing. I don't regret it one bit. Um, I did have to spend a little bit of extra money. But um, I'm going to use that Blu-ray player for so much more. So I don't regret it one bit. So that is just one man's thoughts and opinions. Um, if you guys bought this, I'd love to know what your opinion is. Um, let me know in the comments section um, if you got it. Um, if you agree with me. Um, if you saw the work print version, let me know your thoughts. Because I want to... Uh, it's not going to change my opinion, I guess. But let me know your thoughts on this thing. And uh, So yeah, that's going to do it. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And um, when, we, when, we, when I leave you, I'm going to put part one and part two up on the end screen. Um, if you like this one, go check out those if you will. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to. Um, I do appreciate all you pe all you guys and girls who make it to the end of my videos. Thank you so much. And um, not quite sure what the next one will be. Um, the next plan is probably going to be XM Revan unboxing. But, um, we'll, we'll see. Um, I appreciate you all. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good night and uh, a good week. And uh, as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. So what's up, everybody? Did you hit that subscribe button? Why not? We're giving away these five books. I'm about to put over my face. We're giving away all five of these books. Um, the four of the metal books put up by me. The fifth, the uh, Batman Who Laughs book. Put up by the, the very kind and, and gracious uh, Steve over at Casual Nerd Problems. And not only did he come in clutch with this fifth book, The Batman Who Laughs, that immediately picks up after the metal event, but he also went out and got it signed, here you see, by Scott Snyder. Big thank you to you, Steve. Thank you so much for always being there. Thank you so much for supporting me as much as you have. It is awesome that you gave up that book was signed for this giveaway. So stick around. Um, like this video, subscribe, and uh, we're gonna go live once we hit 500 subscribers on both channels here at Gotham Cinebytes and over at Steve, uh, Casual Casual Nerd Problems. So um, subscribe to both. That way you have double the notifications whenever that video does go live. As always, I appreciate you for watching. I appreciate everybody who subscribes. You might as well get you all five of these books. So yeah. Thank you so much. Stick around for that giveaway.